There we go. Got one hooked up finally. Out here today, trying to catch a little bit of bait. Use for future catfishing here. That's actually a pretty good size bluegill. That's a good one to put on a hook, but. Trying to catch some bluegill for future catfishing. I plan on keeping them alive. I got a cooler there with some water. At home I got a larger tank. Has a filter and stuff on it that I keep them alive. My rig today, I'm just using, that's a weighted bobber. Got probably 18 inches, 24 inches of line. I'm actually using a number eight circle hook. And I like using this because bluegill don't usually swallow it deep. So, get baited back up here for bait. I'm just using uh, mealworms. Just putting them on the hook. Had one taken it there, but he didn't hook up. The circle hook, I try to let them kind of set the hook themselves. Kind of put some tension. It's a little bit tough because the uh, oops, the uh, wind's blowing the bobber into me, so it's tough to keep tension on it all the time. There we go. Got another one. I don't think this one's very big. It'll work good though for channel cats anyway. Fortunately, I haven't put a video out for a while. It's been uh, Things have been a little tough. I had a couple of trips where I got skunked. Completely skunked. And then uh, last weekend turkey hunted a little bit. And um, so I didn't end up going fishing. The weather wasn't great either. And then this weekend some family stuff and got in the way. And then the weather's been not very good. So just out here trying to catch a bait today. I don't have long to fish, probably just fish here for an hour, but hopefully get some, uh, catch uh, eight or nine of them to use for hopefully this coming weekend. There we go. Another small one. Water temperatures haven't quite got warm enough for these, but they've really started to hit real hard. They're still kind of pecking a little bit at the bait. Ooh. Almost lost him. There we go. Ooh, that one's barely hooked. Gonna lose him if he don't. There we go. Where I'm fishing at today, this is just a local uh, pond. And this is on public land, but it's just an uh, old strip mine pond. That's all it is. It's only, I don't even figure, might be an acre in size. But kind of typical for these small ponds. It's pretty much polluted with bluegill. There's some bass in here too. Actually, couple decent bass mostly small but there is some decent bass in here but um, this is close to the house so it doesn't make it too bad to run to catch bluegill and bluegill on these ultralight actually are can be some fun especially when you catch some decent sized ones there we go got another one hooked up kind of switch places you do ooh that one got off that ain't good Usually what I do is I keep hitting the, trying to hit the same spot if I'm getting bites and when it slows down, I'll move over to a, uh, another section. I mean, I haven't actually physically moved. I'm just casting in a different area. And then I'll sometimes kind of go back and forth. It seems like after you catch several out of one spot, then it seems like it usually goes cold there for a little bit. There we go. Another small one. 
these small ones like this I really like for channel cats. Flatheads not so much. Can you give me back my worm? Yep. Got the worm back. Ooh. One nice thing about earlier in the year like this, you can it's easy to keep the bluegill. I have an aerator in the truck. Once I get up to there, I'll put it on for the short ride home, but you don't have to worry. Gets water temp gets warm. I'll use an aerator even when I'm down here. Ooh. Ooh, shoot. There we go. Lost my worm. It went somewhere. Another one, all been about the same size except for that first one that was actually pretty big. Really all I'm doing, I'm not even casting out far. This water really drops off deep here and there's this little bit of structure. Most of them bluegill are over here by these trees or right, right where this water drops off kind of quick. The outlet for this little pond is actually right over here to the left. So this is really, I'd to say, some of the deeper water. So I've not been casting out too far. Main reason I use the weighted bobbers is sometimes they're out a little bit farther. That weighted bobber allows me to, there we go, allows me to get get some more distance without having to add weight. This pond's actually got a ton of them this size in it. I'll probably catch a couple more here and then probably quit keeping. Are you seeing bluegill? No. Then probably not. Oops. Got another one here I was BSing. That's a little tiny one. That one I'm probably going to just let go. Let him go for another day. My son's actually over. Probably can't see him on here. He's actually over on the other side trying to catch bass. I don't think he's uh, done too well so far on that. Get a bite there. There he Ooh. That one's actually pulling pretty good. That's a decent sized bluegill. Not quite as big as the first one, but He's not bad. You got a bite. There you go. It looks like a decent sized one. Not too bad anyway. Pond like most small ponds they're basically all stunted. Got him. Little one. Got one? Huh? Wow. I would uh, let that one go. That one's too small for a number six hook. <laughs> Or a six odd hook. All right, I think we got about nine of them. Not too bad. A couple good sized ones. A lot of them are smaller, but uh, that isn't still isn't too bad. But anyway, we're gonna wrap this up. Hopefully, the next video is gonna be a catfishing video, and we catch some fish. Like I said, the last few last few trips have been skunk trips, and uh, it's not really too exciting to watch a video where you don't do any good. So. Anyway, we're going to uh, head out of here. We'll catch you the next time.